Hi there, my name is Marty, and my wife Susan and I are taking a motorcycle trip through the upper Midwest Mississippi River Valley. Our three-day, two-night trip will take us through Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, and Illinois, all along a route that travels through the beautiful Bluff Country. We have a few specific locations in mind that will include the site of the 1989 classic film Field of Dreams near Dyersville, Iowa. It's a magical place and a mecca for baseball fans everywhere. Then on ahead to the revitalized river city of Dubuque, where we stop by to take in a street festival. Dubuque, Iowa is first city, actually, in Iowa, and it's just full of 19th century architecture and beautiful buildings, and it's a great town. Then it's over the river to the wonderful little town of Galena, Illinois, one-time home to former U.S. President and wartime, Civil War time General Ulysses S. Grant. Then we'll end our second day in La Crosse, Wisconsin, but not before getting lost, looking to take in an evening baseball game. The last day of our trip will find us heading home along the river bluffs and passing through many historical river towns on the way back home to good old St. Paul. But before we go, we got to get geared up for the trip. And so uh, here we are, ready to go. And if you want to get to the bluff country and river valley, you need to pass through some Minnesota farm country first. It's generally flat with maybe a few rolling hills, but beautiful just the same. Tidy farmhouses line the roadside, and chickens and cows roam the field. Those familiar sights and sounds give way to the river valley as we near the town of Prescott, Wisconsin for our first gasoline break. Prescott, Wisconsin is a river town just over the border from Minnesota. You pass over that little bridge there, and then you're in the historic town of Prescott, Wisconsin. The upper Mississippi River Valley is dotted with amazing small towns like this, with names like Hastings, Red Wing, Maiden Rock, Victory, and McGregor. These are the towns of our forefathers and mothers, immigrants who took ocean voyages and crossed mountains in wagons, looking for a better life. And here, since it's hard to see the river bluffs with all the foliage along the road, took some drone footage here to show you how beautiful this river valley is in the bluff country.
Well, at certain points along the journey, you can glance out over uh, to the right side and, and, and look at how wide the river is and probably stretches anywhere from a quarter to a mile and a half across. And you get a sense of the, the majesty of the Mississippi River and how, how large it is and how this must have you know, been a really attractive place for people to settle back in the day. And um, this ride is not only beautiful in the summertime and in the springtime, but in the autumn when all these colors change, these trees burst into flame red and bright golden yellow. Uh, this ride is a pretty spectacular and special ride that time of the year as well. The only time uh, you really shouldn't ride a motorcycle is from like uh, end of October through probably, uh, you know, mid-April. That's, uh, that's going to be nippy. It's going to be cold. You too. Our first stop after crossing into Iowa is a small city named McGregor. We needed to get some gas anyway and decided to take a ride around to see what the place was like. Uh, it has a regional riverboat gambling going on in it and uh, it's really a good collection of 19th century buildings as you'll see here in a minute. Um, it's got a lot going for it in a, you know for a little community like it is. Uh, I think although this probably like most cities used to be more industrial now it's centered around you know tourism and things like that and um, like I said it's got a lot of these 19th century buildings mixed with newer construction it's managed to retain a good deal of its charm and places along the road here you can see remnants of the old midwest an elevated slatboard walkway red brick buildings old stone churches were built here as a you know central focal point of to the towns like mcgregor and they remain so to to today yeah so um, this is just a beautiful town you can see these cool, these cool old buildings, man. And I, I'm so happy that uh, these weren't steamrolled and erased from the chalkboard of America because these are special, uh, special little towns and these are special places. You'd see um, really nice old houses. Like when we swing a left here, look at that brick house. That's pretty cool. Uh, situated next to this old church here, stone church, obviously very old. Um, well, old by American standards, that is. Um, certainly not by European standards, but, you know, in America, we look at anything 100, 150, 200 years old as, as pretty old around here. Because, like, like I said, America has wiped itself clean many times and rebuilt itself. So... If you haven't seen the 1989 film Field of Dreams starring Kevin Costner, Amy Madigan, Ray Liotta, James Earl Jones, and the great Burt Lancaster in his final film, you should drop what you're doing right now and go watch that movie. It is an incredible, magical movie. I think if Frank Capra had made a movie in 1989, it would star Jimmy Stewart, and it would be this movie. That's how magical and special this movie is, and it isn't even really about baseball. It's about redemption, second chances, and a relationship between a father and a son. Ready? <laughs> you it, you? <laughs> get it? You get it. If you build. 
Ray, people will come, Ray. They'll come to Iowa for reasons they can't even fathom. They'll turn up your driveway not knowing for sure why they're doing it. They'll arrive at your door as innocent as children, longing for the past. Of course, we won't mind if you look around, you'll say. It's only $20 per person. They'll pass over the money without even thinking about it, for it's money they have and peace they lack. And they'll walk out to the bleachers and sit in shirt sleeves on a perfect afternoon. They'll find they have reserved seats somewhere along one of the baselines where they sat when they were children and cheered their heroes. And they'll watch the game and it'll be as if they dip themselves in magic waters. The memories will be so thick they'll have to brush them from their faces. People will come, Ray. The one constant through all the years, Ray, has been baseball. America has rolled by like an army of steamrollers. It's been a race like a blackboard rebuilt and erased again. But baseball has marked the time. This field, this game, it's part of our past, Ray. It reminds us of all that once was good and could be again. Oh, people will come, Ray. People will most definitely come. Well, I left that place with a little bit of its magic and much the same way I left it in 1992. Just feeling like I wish I could have hung out there a little bit longer. When people think of Iowa, they probably think of John Deere tractors, miles and miles of cornfields, and old weathered looking farmers in overalls. They might think of the flat, wide open spaces filled with green fields and small towns. And those images of Iowa are all true, but Iowa is so much more than that. And it's one of my favorite states in the entire union. Iowa's home to the wonderful bridges of Madison County. It's filled with lovely, tidy towns populated by hardworking, good living folks who still find Common sense is the best medicine for life. Iowa has given us artist Grant Wood, who painted American Gothic, and author Bill Bryson, one of the best writers of our generation. The state is the birthplace of Buffalo Bill Cody, John Wayne, and freaking Glenn Miller. And it's the future birthplace of James T. Kirk. If that's not enough for you, well, how about Frodo Baggins? That's right, Elijah Wood was born and raised in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Heck, Iowa even gave us a president, Herbert Hoover. We can probably forgive him for that one. Iowa boasts some of the most fertile ground in the entire planet and is the center of agriculture in the Midwest, but it also has some of the finest colleges and universities in the country. It's got museums that rival any of those on the coasts, and it's home to a number of Fortune 500 companies. If that weren't enough, Iowa also feeds most of the country and some of the world. Dubuque is Iowa's first city, meaning the city was the first in Iowa and dates back many years before its official founding in 1833. Settled by Irish, German, and other immigrants, it was once one of the 10 largest cities in America. Dubuque is situated at the junction of Wisconsin and Illinois, the area known as the Tri-State Region. And here we got a little lost, so we took a little alleyway tour of the city. Not the most attractive view, but a, a, wee, a way to see the city. The city has been like an industrial manufacturing center for the Midwest for more than 150 years until the farm crisis 
and manufacturing downturn in the late 70s and 80s. The city fell on pretty hard times and lost a significant amount of its population. But like many of its counterparts in the Midwest Rust Belt, Dubuque rebounded and is home to high-tech and healthcare companies, five colleges and university, and loads of tourism. The city attracts more than 1.5 million tourists a year. Visitors like my wife and I come to the area to see its magnificent collection of 19th century buildings. With more than 300 buildings on the National Register of Historic Places, it's a chance to get into a time machine and see the place through the eyes of our ancestors. Look at this magnificent building right here. This is just spectacular. And it evokes a sense of a time when people put an effort and a craftsmanship and a stewardship into things that they created. Buildings weren't just functional buildings for people to live in. They were works of art and they were an expression of of that artistic beauty. Look at the old churches here. And that's the old city hall there in the middle of Dubuque. And, and now we're going to head into the street festival. But first, Susan got to fix her hair. I don't have to worry about that. Town Art Fair or something? There was a 20 minute wait for a fried egg sandwich. I got my honey. <laughs> Well, after experiencing a little bit of what the city of Dubuque had to offer, it was time for us to head across the mighty Mississippi and over towards the great state of Illinois and on to Galena. But before you can get there, you have to pass over the Mississippi on a bridge like this. And many of this type of bridge, I actually don't know what type of bridge this is, actually. Is it a suspension bridge? Is it... I don't know what kind of bridge it is, but it's cool. And a lot of these types of bridges span the Mississippi River as you go up and down the river route uh, between all of these states here, Illinois, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa. Um, there's tons of bridges like this, and they are they're really fun to go across. They're cool. The charming town of Galena, Illinois is about 20 short minutes away from Dubuque and is situated on the Galena River, which is a tributary of the Mississippi. Among the many features of Galena, it boasts a main street of perfectly preserved 19th century buildings, which you can see here. These buildings house shops, restaurants, bookstores, boutiques, and even some wineries that introduce visitors to the stock of area vineyards. During the mid 19th century, Galena was the largest steamboat hub north of St. Louis and boasted a population that rivaled Chicago. Galena is also the historic home of Civil War General Ulysses S. Grant, who later became the 18th President of the United States. Some friends of ours recommended visiting the town and told us the best way to experience it is by foot. So we'll park the bikes a ways up here and bring you along for a stroll down Main Street.
Well, it was time to head out to La Crosse, but no trip is complete without a stop at the Dickeyville Grotto in Dickeyville, Wisconsin. On the grounds of the Holy Ghost Parish, these are shrines built by Father Matthias Werneris. He was the pastor of Dickeyville's Holy Ghost Church from 1920 to 1930. It was built with items donated by parishioners and is made from colorful stones, shells, metal fragments, glass, wood, even a few precious stones. The site also contains a tribute shrine to patriotism. And even if you're not religious, this is just a great place to stop at and look around. Beautiful gardens. It's hard to describe the scale of this place and the, and the weird quirkiness of it, but it is a pretty neat place. Then we pass through the virtually deserted town of Lancaster, Wisconsin. I mean, like, almost not a single soul uh, around here. I don't know if there was a big event going around, but it was weird. We drove through town a couple of times and saw maybe one or two people, which which seemed weird for a Saturday night. But anyway, uh, that's Lancaster, Wisconsin, and you know, then it was on on through the countryside to uh, La Crosse. As you enter the river city of La Crosse, two things strike you immediately. It's vibrant, active, and it still possesses the charm of its 19th century roots. We had a chance to see a little more of the cities, especially its side streets, because we got lost trying to find the ballpark. Susan finally convinced me to pull over and look up some directions, you know, men in directions. I guess we don't mix too well. Uh, but I think getting lost is half the fun. Eventually, uh, you know, we collected some directions. Susan helped me out. She's a great coach. And then, you know, it was off to, uh, to find this, this hidden gem, this little ballpark somewhere in the middle of the cross. There's this ballpark, maybe close to the river. I guess I wasn't exactly sure, but it was getting towards evening and it was just a beautiful beautiful day for a ride and you know what La Crosse is a beautiful place and I just guess I didn't want the day to end but it wasn't over yet we were off to the ballpark and you know eventually we arrived in time to catch a few innings of the La Crosse Loggers Baseball Club and, uh, and so we had an enjoyable evening watching baseball
Well, we woke up to pleasant skies and sunshine, ready to ride the river road home to good old St. Paul. It was time to leave Lacrosse behind and make this final day of our adventure count. So we're headed off to some of the other river towns along this road, and here we go over another great bridge that spans the mighty Mississippi. Hey, it's a cry and shame this gate is locked because I really wanted to get in here and roam the grounds of this big mansion and maybe knock on the door and see if anybody was around. I don't know what I expected to find. Maybe, you know, uh, you know, people in Victorian dress, but of course that's not true. But, uh, but it's just a wonderful place to look at old buildings, just a great city. Uh, even if you're not into old buildings and architecture the way I am, look at that. Hey, old-timey architect and craftsman and bricklayer, you didn't have to build that place like a castle, but you did, and I thank you. And even the nondescript, like, little apartment building there is, is nice. Now, Jimmy John's, maybe not as much thought into the architecture, but, hey, you have to stop and eat at some point on a road trip. But, yeah, getting back to Winona, you can see, you know, as you look around and drive around Winona, like, look at that that building. I mean, you know... That building just says, hey, I, ca I cared, you know. I built something substantial. I wanted to last. It's not just a place. It's a work of art. And now we pass back over the Mississippi, which we'll do a couple of more times on our route back up the, uh, up the river road on 35 to Wisconsin, through Wisconsin and on to St. Paul. There's lots of these bridges, and like I said, they're cool to cross. Then we're back out on the country roads here, and, you know, the further you get away from the city, the sort of, I don't know, safer you feel. You're always a little bit paranoid on a motorcycle, mainly because, um, not because of you or what you're worried about your driving, because you're acutely aware of your surroundings in a motorcycle, but, but other people, other people who don't pay attention to motorcyclists. That's the biggest risk, I think, to a motorcyclist. Maybe out here in the country you get the odd deer, running across the road. You have to be careful with that at dusk and dawn. But 
But otherwise, if you're doing midday riding, you, you know, it's pretty safe. It's pretty, you know, one way, one direction here we're headed. But being on a motorcycle is a different, different experience. It's different from looking out over the world or uh, through a car windshield or your windows rolled up and the air conditioning on. It's just when you're out here on two wheels, it's a visceral experience. It's a, uh, you feel the heat, the cold, the rain, the wet. The smells, the, the sounds, the sights, they're all, they're all sharper. They're all more in focus. You're more in tune. And I don't think you can get closer to a place uh, other than maybe walking or bicycling. So about four or five years ago, Susan decided to get into adventure motorcycling. And, and we started taking short trips. And then those trips led to longer trips. And pretty soon we found ourselves traveling across the Canadian Shield on little 250s and we upgraded to these 500s and and the trips have gotten longer and we circumnavigated Lake Superior a 1600 mile ride which was just incredible and Susan has a trip planned to go to Kathmandu and then ride up to the base camp of the Himalayas um, and uh, that's scheduled for later this year but she inspired me to get back in the saddle, and hopefully this video inspires you to do the same or just travel any way you can and explore your world. Well, thanks for coming along for the journey. I'll leave you with this footage of the way home. And don't forget to leave us a comment, and I'd love to hear from you. Take care, everybody. So long for now. Through the stars to get to you